there are different um, you know analysis one can uh, try out in this case okay one of the analysis is pooled OLS regression okay. it's one form of regression OLS regression that you can use instead of panel data okay the reason why we are trying OLS regression is to show you the weakness of this uh, technique okay weakness. also to show you that why this particular technique is not very suitable for this type of data set right and that will ensure that we have a strong argument for going in for a panel data analysis so just to show you how is uh, how to use a pool uh, OLS regression so the estimate mission happens to uh, ordinary least square and the analysis is pretty similar to cross section now if you just ignore the time series component and you know use the cross section what problem one might face we'll see here and what is the form of this particular uh, you know pole regression well it assumes uniform error variance right um, so you will have uh, you know if you have like let's say we have got uh, two um, two cross sections okay group one and group two okay so the only thing only thing that is uh, uniform in these two groups is the uh, variance of the error okay so the error variance is constant that is what is uh, assumed so we will not get into details of it details of how pool oil regression is uh, uh, um, I mean why it is pool oil is regression and and how it is different from the OLS regression you can read more about it but we'll be using uh, pool OLS regression in this case so only thing you need to re remember here is that the error variance is uniform across different cross section okay so that is one assumption in pooled OLS regression and we will use this uh, in this data so how do we use this we use the PLM and then we have got the dependent and we have got the independent so we have just uh, you know coded this so in independent you have the three independent uh, variables right we saw in the data set we have got the data input data the same data that i showed you and in the model you have to uh, you know put it in uh, put it in in uh, in in the kind of model that you are using okay um so so we are using pooling in this case so just uh, provide pooling to this particular statement and we are saving this in a variable called pool so this is the syntax okay simple syntax and if you're familiar with r you should find it very easy okay so we're just taking a procedure plm which uh, takes argument which has uh, independent variable uh, variables dependent variable the data and the type of model that we are trying to uh, a type of uh, uh, you know panel data models that we are trying to fit here so we'll see some of the statistics in this particular result um, so in the results we have got the intercept and the uh, you know the uh, slope coefficients the r square and the adjusted r square remember this is uh, ols so we'll of course get these uh, you know these things in the results so what we can, we can see here is that uh, two of the variables are significant okay? experience is significant because it's less than 0 0.05 similarly education is also significant number of projects is not a significant variable in uh, determining the salary of uh, an employee uh, the R square is 0 0.35 and the adjusted R square is also pretty uh, pretty much the same so that's what result from this particular uh, model now is it good no it is not good model because it's a bad fit to the data okay we can actually have a better model we can actually have a better model with higher r square okay with higher r square uh, or uh, which which significant uh, signifies uh, the model strength okay r square 
the higher it is the better it is right we want always very high r square it, we want always it to go up so it ignores the fact that it is a panel data it's simply we are fitting a cross section model to a panel data so of course we will expect a not so good model and that's exactly what we are getting here we are getting only 35 percent of r square which is not a very uh, good fit to the data and this is happening because the error terms are correlated and we are not taking care of that okay so we are losing out a lot of information in this particular type of model okay the next one that we are going to do is the between estimation so this is the estimation type 2 okay the pool 1 was 1 and this is 2 the second type so what it does is it calculates the average of the dependent and the independent variable over time and does the all is regression of the uh, of the dependent uh, uh, by taking the independent variables it's pretty simple uh, so what it does is we have got time series as well as cross section data right when we do the average if you take the average over time so you'll only get the cross section right so what do you do you simply take the average over time you have got seven period right one to uh, you know seventh so you take the average of you know education the average of uh, the number of projects the average of the average of uh, you know the third variable as well okay and if you do that the time series component is gone now now you don't have data for all seven years you just have data for the average of the seven years so we are now have uh, if you do that we do not have to deal with time series we just have to deal with the cross section and that is also going to be an issue but I'm just showing you an alternative technique like what are the options that you want even if you use between estimation it is not going to be optimal in nature it might be a little better than the uh, pooled OLS regression but may not be the most optimal one okay so so the syntax remains same except the fact that in the model statement we are using between instead of uh, the pooled that we had used last time. Um, the results are pretty much same except the fact that the R square has gone up now. R square has 0.4 instead of 0.35 uh, the last time we saw. Now as I was initially, I, I was talking to you uh, in the last slide that the R square might go up but we are not sure if this model is the optimal fit and it has certainly gone, gone up but it is definitely not the optimal one it can go up uh, even higher uh, if we use a right model okay so the between estimation is also not a fit to this data one thing you need to uh, remember here probably you have to revisit the, uh, the theory theory and I strongly strongly recommend you to you know learn the pooled estimation and the combined estimation uh, uh, ordinary square uh, pooled and combined ordinary uh, OLS uh, estimation uh, you should go through the theory to understand this particular uh, this better because I'm not able to cover like every single thing in this particular uh, video because the uh, you know the the main purpose of this video is to learn panel data not the OLS one so I'm just you know talking in brief about this estimation but you can always go through the theory uh, to get a better understanding so in combined estimation all we are doing is we just averaging it out uh, over time okay so we have got education let's for example we have got education number of education for uh, sorry education of course will not change uh, let's take one data okay let's say experience right so experience is changing over time so so this is the experience for the first individual right we're just taking uh, the average of that in between estimation similarly the number of projects we're also taking the average of that okay uh, so when you take the average of that 
all these seven uh, observations, you will only get a one value, right? So the data will be um, will not have any time series component, and that's exactly what happens in between estimation. In pool estimation, we don't do that. We still have the still have all the seven observations. But in between, we only have the average of the seven. That's why we have got rid on, uh, of the uh, time series components. What is the next one? The next one is the first difference estimation. In this particular uh, type of estimation, we exploit some feature of the panel data. Okay. So what we do is that um, we do the first difference. Uh, of the uh, of the two equations, uh, you know, for different time periods. Uh, if you know in time series we have got the lags, right? So if x t is known as the data for the current time, x t minus one is known as the data for the lag period. Similarly, x t minus two is the data for the next lag period. Right, so this is how we represent a time series data. If you're familiar with time series, this is pretty easy for you. If you're not, so this is how we represent uh, the time series data. So we have got two types of equations here, two equations rather, y i t and y i t minus one. So this is for the lag period. Okay. Similarly, for the independent variables, we have got x i t and x i t minus one. CI is an individual effect. Okay, individual effect as in the effect that is uh, purely for different uh, for different individuals. Okay, uh, in this example, we have got the data for uh, you know uh, the employees, right? We have got data for the employee. Now we have got data for education. Uh, then projects, and then <coughs> what else? The education uh, projects. What was the last one? Okay, okay. The third, third variable, right? And apart from the three variables, there are other things uh, about a particular employee that also matters, right? For instance, the IQ level. Right. So, if you compare two employees with same education, same uh, years of experience, uh, same number of projects, you still find a difference in the salary. That could be because of uh, you know the IQ level of two employees. Okay, so that could be one thing. The uh, the uh, the university or the school that a person attended that also could matter. Right, university. Also could matter. Then uh, family background, parents' income, right? That also could matter uh, for the the salary of an employee, right? Somebody who has gone to a better school or a better university, uh, whose parents have been able to spend uh, more money or more time for the uh, for, for a particular employee. Uh, um, then there is a higher likelihood, the likelihood that he would have uh, been able to more successful in his profession would have been higher, right? So given these three variables same, you will still find the difference in the salary for two persons, and these are individual specific things, okay? Individual specific things, or also we we call it as the unobserved, unobserved variables or unobserved uh, features of the data. Remember in the First slide for final data, we talked about the unobserved things, and I, I had uh, told that time that I'll be talking about in detail. So, this is exactly what it is. Now, we capture that in a variable called CI. I stands for the cross section because that doesn't change over time. Also, that's an assumption here. So, <clears throat> we just see that you know uh, the unobserved thing is very specific for a particular uh, employee. So, it could be C1, C2, and C3 for employee number one, employee number two, and employee number three. And they will, of course, differ uh, among them. Okay. So that component is captured in CI. When you take first difference, 
what is first difference you just simply subtract uh, the lag from the original variable so okay so if we take yt minus yt minus 1 we essentially call it as first difference okay and then we take yt uh, and you can you can you know go on you can take second difference third difference and so on but this is first difference and we do the regression by taking the first difference and that's why it is called first difference estimation so essentially what we are doing here is that we are uh, taking yeah so we're taking the first difference here so in the left hand side we'll of course we'll have something like this plus you know you have got beta 1 uh, x1 it it then beta 2 x it minus 1 plus ci minus ci remember the unobserved factor gets cancelled out in this case and then you have the error term and so on now that's interesting when you take the first difference you actually get rid of the unobserved impact or the individual specific uh, you know effect on the dependent variable and technically we call it call that as individual heterozygote okay which essentially means the uh, variation or the effect of unobserved things on dependent variables we technically call it as individual heterozygote is eliminated from the model by taking the first difference when we run this particular uh, type of regression by taking the first difference by getting rid of the individual effect syntax remains same except the fact that in the statement model you are just using fd so what are we getting here we are just getting one significant variable okay and that is projects okay so education and uh, number of years of experience hasn't been significant now that's a little strange okay so what about the r square the r square is extremely low okay now we are getting two strange events one that two important variables education and number of years of experience are coming out to be insignificant so that's strange because you know you don't expect these variables uh, to be insignificant uh, in such cases why because these are very important in determining salary so that's common sense right and R score is also <coughs> pretty less, 0 0.007. That's like less than one uh, percent. So that's totally strange, and this result is unacceptable. So you've seen education got dropped because education doesn't change over time, right? So it's totally got dropped, right? Um, number of your experience is coming out to be insignificant. So this model is also not so very good, okay? In fact, not at all good. This is totally giving.